Meyer André Marcel Schwab is a French writer of Jewish descent. Born in 1867 in Cheville, son of Georges Schwab, personal friend of Théophile Gautier and of Mathilde Cohon. He studied at the Lycée of Nantes, then at the Lycée Louis Le Grand, and proceeding then to the study of Sanskrit and philology at the École Pratis, the Hautes Etudes, and earning the title of Bachelor of Arts by 1888. In 1884, he became an artilleryman in the French army. Schwab became acquainted with a great many of notable French writers during his career, including Anatole France, Jean Lorraine, Octave Mirbeau, Catul Mendes, and Oscar Wilde. In 1891, he met a woman named Louise, with whom he kept up a secret relationship until her death from tuberculosis in 1893. Her death devastated Schwab, resulting in uh, the book of Monel being devoted to her memory. A year later, he met actress Marguerite Moreno, who had previously been romantically entangled with Catul Mendes. The two became a couple by 1895 and got married in London in 1900. Schwab became chronically ill, first with intestinal disease by 1896, however he eventually developed pneumonia and died in 1905 in Paris. His first book was the Stevenson-inspired Double Heart from 1891 with his The King and the Golden Mask following a year later. His Imaginary Lives, his final original collection, was published in 1896. His writings became greatly influential, specifically the Book of Monel and then subsequently Imaginary Lies, which was highly praised by writers as Georges Louis Borges. The King and the Golden Mask is a collection of usually very short stories, some of them fantasies, though a lot of them simply being historical vignettes without any fantastic element to them. The title story is bizarre, fantastic and gothic, and not completely representative of the rest of the collection, taking place in a fantastic land ruled by a dynasty of masked kings whose real faces their subjects never see, and whose revelation brings about despair, horror, and a terrible, sickening peace to the king. The Death of Orgy is a mythical story seemingly taking place during the Ice Age. A great hunter accompanied by animal spirits travels to the north as all lies flee south from the ever-approaching, suffocating grasp of winter which is killing all animal and plant life as it spreads from the north. It is a story of how Orgy brought an end to the endless winter and at what serious price. Some of these succeeding stories are so short that I can't describe them at all in order not to spoil them, and others I have to provide only a sentence or two. There is The Embalming Women, which is a short, tragic story of Ophelion, who travels to Libya, where he's loved by twin sisters from a city of domes where only embalming women live, and spend their lives catering to corpses. Four Visages tells the story of a French countryside beset upon by a group of vicious, murdering rogues in the year 1444. In the Milesian Virgins, on the other hand, we have the virgins of the Greek city of Mileto suddenly start hanging themselves, no one knowing why. 52 and 53 Orphila is the story of a, of a whole pavilion in a sanatorium ganging up and bullying one of the occupants. The Salt Smugglers is the story of a brief escape of a pair of galley slaves from their ship, yet what they escape to is so bleak and horrid that they end up returning back to their ship of their own free will. And The Flute is the story of the horror and distress caused to a group of sailors when an old man's flute reminds them of all they have lost and all the futures they have doomed and annihilated during their time at sea. There are many more tales of perversity and vicious cruelty yet to Detaily summarize them, considering most of them run at only a couple of pages, would be ruining the magic. And thus I highly advise you to go and seek out this book for yourself. Imaginary Lives is a fantasy collection, though you may not uh, be able to immediately recognize that from the fact that it seems to advertise itself as a collection of biographies, specifically a collection of hypothetical biographies. And though this uh, may make you reluctant to read it, I highly advise you to do so, because, you know, the very first critical biography, Empedocles, deals with a supposed god with supernatural powers, including the ability to raise the dead. Erostrat, meanwhile, tells us of Herostratus and how he was mystically elevated to destroy the temple of Artemis in Ephesus by divine providence, regardless of his fate at the hands of the people of Ephesus after he succeeded. Crates tells us of the sickly, disgusting, lazy life of Crates, the cynical philosopher who died simply because he didn't wish to exert the attention necessary to feed himself. Septima narrates the story of an African slave, of love, spells, of appeasing of angry gods, and of spirits descending to the dark depths of the netherworld. Sufra, meanwhile, deals with a rather ironically ending quest for the Ring of Immortality originally belonging to King Solomon. Then we have Secco Angiolieri, which tells us of the horrid, cynical life of Secco Angiolieri, the poet of hate. 
The life of Cyril Tournier, a tragic poet, begins stating, Cyril Tournier was born of the union of an unknown god with a prostitute. Attempting to fashion a new religion, he forces himself upon his own daughter sexually on top of an old cemetery. Major Steed Bonnet gives us the story of embarrassment and humiliation when a wealthy major goes out pretending to be a pirate and then runs into and gets boarded by Edward Teach, aka Blackbeard himself. The final story is the tale of Burke and Hare, the twin murderers who sold the bodies of their victims to a Dr. Robert Knox for the sake of public autopsies. Once more, some of these stories have been left unsummarized for the benefit of the potentially interested readers. While most of Schwab's work seems to have been translated into English, with the King and the Golden Mask getting its first full translation thanks to the Everest source for Wakefield Press, his earliest and largest collection, The Double Heart, is yet to be brought over into English, which is a shame and makes me envious of those readers who can in fact speak French.